Again, welcome to World Class Sunday School. Here we are, we are in the final lesson of Unit 2 of our fall quarter. And as you know, our, the quarter is entitled The Sovereignty of God. And in this second unit, we've been looking at the sovereignty of, of Jesus. In Lesson 5, the author and finisher of our faith. And we'll be looking uh, again in Hebrews 12th chapter, verses 1 through 13. And in this, in this 12th chapter of Hebrews, in an attempt to encourage the believers not to become discouraged and also not to return to Judaism, this should uh, encourage us today not to drift away. We struggle to stay strong in an increasing hostile environment. It, it's, you have to put forth effort in order to live a godly life. But this lesson is encouraging us to hang in there even when we suffer persecution, uh, even when we suffer for whatever, for whatever reason. The encouragement is to hang in there and keep striving to do what's good and right. So we're just going to uh, go ahead and look at uh, the verses. And I'd like to begin by reading verse 1 and 2 in Hebrews 12. And it reads, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about, with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which you do so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Using the analogy of a, of a race of the writer of Hebrews, first uh, letting us know that he talks about the cl uh, cloud of witnesses. That refers to those in the 11th chapter of Hebrews which we call the faith chapter. And if you go back and, and read chapter 11, you'll see where the patriots of Israel were noted for their faithfulness to God and through all they had to endure. And those uh, witnesses should encourage us. Now, uh, they, we are encouraged by their faith how they held on to their faith in times of trials and tribulation. And it says that because of these great witnesses that we should be encouraged and we should strive to win the race because of what they have done. They've shown us that even though they, they have gone through a lot, they still held the faith and they still finished the race. And it should be an encouragement to us because we go through in, in our faith walk and we should be encouraged by them. Okay, it says, let us lay aside every weight and sin which so easily beset us. And if you're going to run a race, you have to get rid of things that's going to hinder you. And that's, that's what it's referring to here. The, looking at the weights and sins. Weights are not necessarily sins, but weights are things that hinder us from giving God our best. Uh, if, if, you, if you need an example, I, I, sometimes uh, a TV, it's, no, it's not a sin to watch TV, but uh, if, if it's going to keep us away from uh, devoting our time of study and prayer to God, then it's a weight. It, it's something that's going to hinder us 
and and not allow us to continue to build our relationship with God. And then it says sin, uh, the sin that so easily beset us, uh, and uh, we have to refrain from from those things that cause us to sin. And there are there are some things in our lives that really trigger us to be disobedient to God. And that's what it's talking about. That we have strongholds in our lives. Sometimes, uh, and I, I know from a personal experience that God, if, if you pray to God and ask, ask him to deliver you from certain things, he will do that. But it, sometimes it, it takes an effort on our part to really resist the temptation. And, and I, I, we can't do it without God. But sometimes we might need help from others around us. Say, and I'm just going to use this as, as an analogy. Um, sometimes we have addictions that that are strong in our lives, and God will deliver us from those. But sometimes we need help from those around us, like counselors and people like that that can can help encourage us. But whatever it takes for us to lay aside the weights and sins. That's what we are encouraged to do, because we can run a better race if we don't have these other distractions or things that keep us from doing the things that, that we're supposed to do. Okay, it says, uh, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. The author, the author is, is the creator. He created salvation. Jesus did by dying for us on Calvary's cross, he created salvation. And all we have to do is believe that Jesus is who he say he is, the Son of God, and that he died on the cross for our sins. When we uh, believe that in our hearts and confess that with, with our mouths, then we begin the race of, of, of Christianity, a walking, uh, uh, living the life of being a Christian. God, God, Jesus is the creator and author of that. That's the, that's the author. And he's not only, not only did he create it, but he's going to finish it. And, and the finisher means the one who, who brings us to perfection. <clears throat> and, and, and here, I wouldn't have any other, anybody else being my author and finisher but Jesus Christ. Uh, it says, looking unto Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. What, what the, the author here is trying to get us to see is that we, as Christians, the Bible has, uh, promises us that if we dare to live godly, then we're going to suffer persecution. And suffering is not easy to endure. And that, look, here the Jews, uh, those believers, were going back to Judaism, uh, uh, just walking away from the faith. And a lot of times when we are uh, oppressed, when we have to face opposition, it can be discouraging. It can be very discouraging. But the author here is trying to get us to see that we will never endure what Jesus had to endure for us. But he kept the faith. He showed us that, that it can be done. And, and these witnesses that we talked about earlier showed us that it, that it can be done. Even though we get uh, depressed sometimes, we get uh, downtrodden sometimes, but hanging in there is, is well worth the effort. And we, you, you have to, we have to put forth an effort in this, this walk for Christ. It's not an easy walk all the time. It's not, not uh, always a bed of roses, but we, we have to hang in there and endure the, thing that, the things that that we have to endure in order to finish the race. Okay, it says, uh, despising the shame. Now, uh, dying on the cross, it was, it was a dying of shame. He died a shameful death. But he did it for us. 
so that we, we can have eternal life. Despising the shame and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. And we studied about this in one of our earlier lessons, how Jesus is our high priest. And he was, he was crucified for our sins. He was buried and he rose again. And then he ascended back to heaven to sit at the right hand of God to intercede for us. And, and that's, that's where that should be an encouragement right there, another way of encouraging us to hang in there because Jesus has experienced everything that we've experienced, but he's interceding for us with God. Okay, now we we'll move on to the, the uh, third. We're going to read the verse 3 and 4. It says, For consider him that endured such contradictions for sinners against himself. Lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. And he'll, he'll uh, think about all that Jesus endured uh, for sinful people. The Bible said when we were yet in our sins, Christ died for us. And so he suffered those things for us when we were sinful people. Uh, we <laughs> hey, if he can do it for us when, when we turn our backs to him, then we, we should be able to do it for him and knowing that he's there for us, uh, he, knowing what he, he has done for us, that should, should cause us to have more energy and not, not to faint and, and get weary in well-doing. The Bible says that we sh if we don't get weary in well-doing, then later on we're gonna we're gonna reap, uh, and so we want to be reapers. We want to stay in the race, and we want to be productive, productive uh, Christians. Uh, verse four says, "Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin." Christ shed His blood for us. We we not we will never have to face the things that Christ faced. Uh, he's given his blood for us. Oh man, that's that's extreme. And he, but he did it for us. He was faithful to the end and gave his blood that we might have this right that that we are looking at here. And so, by, by focusing on what Christ did on our behalf, we won't become weary and give up. That, that's what he's. That's what the the writer here is trying to show us. Because if we stay focused on Christ, and I, you know that could be a key right here, staying focused on Christ. We stay focused on Christ and looking and seeing what he's done for us, then that should encourage us and give us more strength to, to pursue this race that we are in. Now, remember now, this, this Christian walk is not a, not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's, it's from the beginning, from salvation, until the, till we are perfected by Christ. And, and until, it's, you know, when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, then we are, we are sanctified by him. That means we are set apart for his use. And the sanctification goes on until, okay, now he was the author. He, he started it. And it's going to go on until until he finishes. Now we want to uh, look, we looked at verses uh, 1 through 4 and we, we kind of got an idea. Uh, we see here what, what the writer of Hebrews is saying when he talks about Jesus Christ being the author and the finisher of our faith. Now, you know, we, we're talking about the sovereignty of Christ. And Christ had the authority, has the authority to be the author and finisher of our faith. Now we, we're going to look at uh, how we are corrected and trained by the sovereign Christ. And, and that, that's, that's going to take place in, from verse 5 through 13, but we, we're just going to take them one verse at a time. Verse 5 says, Are ye have forgotten the exaltation which speaketh unto you 
as unto children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. And what he's saying is, have you forgotten what was written in Proverbs 3, 11 through 12? Uh, in, in those, and then he quotes what the verse says. My son despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Solomon is telling us in Proverbs that God discipline comes from his love. God cares enough to help us grow and mature. The rebuking of the Lord, the chastening of the Lord, is a, the way uh, God is correcting us. And then it goes on to say, From whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourges every son whom he receiveth. Okay, now this is a, can be a touchy subject, because here it talks about the Greek word for punish literally means to whip. And, and I know many today see this as, as being cruel, but the Bible says that if we spare the rod, we'll spoil the child. And it's literally talking about a, a way of correcting and discipline through the process of whipping. Look, my daddy whipped me when I was growing up, and right now, I thank him for loving me enough to, to care that I was doing what was right and, and to, to correct me when I wasn't. And th that's, that's really what this lesson is, is showing us right here. It says in verse uh, 6, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasten. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasten. This is God's way. And look, God's way is always better than our ways. And uh, it says here in verse 7, says, if, you, if ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as a son. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? That's a sign to us that we are children of God. When God chasing us uh, it's, it's God's God's way of showing us that we are one of his it's nothing like being a child of God I, I can I, I attest to that right now it, there's nothing like being a child of God and the Bible here is teaching us and showing us that chastening by God indicates that we are his child Okay, then it says in verse 8, it says, But if ye be without chastening, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Okay, in verse 7 it says, When we are chastened by God, it, it's a, it shows us that we are his son. But if we are not chastening, then we are bastards. And this word bastard means illegitimate. That means that we are not, not his, his children or his child. Because it says, whereof all are partakers, it means that all of God's children are chastened by him. God, look, when we, when we, when we stray away and do, do what's wrong, God is going to chasten us for it. And, and we should expect that. And we should, hey, look, we should encourage it, really, and accept it. With, with open arms and, and because it's a way of God letting us know that we are first of all that we are his and then that we are out of line and uh, it's, it, it goes on to, to talk about uh, see we serve a perfect God uh, and, and God by him being perfect He's going to make sure that we are stay in line. And then we look at verse 9. It says, Furthermore, 
we have had fathers of our flesh which correcteth us, and we give them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of the Spirit? <laughs> Respect is what, what it's talking about here. And, and I can relate to this because I respect my father for correcting me. Uh, after their own pledges, they were imperfect. Now, see, because my father was not a perfect man, but he was doing what he thought best for me. But God is perfect, and his discipline is always right and good for us. We, we serve a perfect God. He knows when we step over the line, that when we're not doing wh what's right and pleasing in his sight. And he's going to let us know by chastening us. And by him, and if we can reverence or have respect for an earthly father who was not perfect, how much more respect should we have for God who is a perfect God? And, and look, it's showing us also that it's for our good. And we're going to see, see more about that in, in these last few verses that we're going to read. Uh, and I just want just to reemphasize that, that God is perfect and his discipline is always, always right for us. Okay, and verse 10 says, for they verily for a few days <clears throat> chastening us after their own pleasure. But he for our profit that we might be partakers of his holiness. And it's, it's showing the uh, contrast but why uh, our, heavenly, our earthly fathers punish us and why God punishes us. And it says, for they verily for a few days chastening us after their own pleasure. It, for a while, our earthly fathers are uh, in authority over us while they're here on earth. But, but God is in, in authority over us forever and ever. And, it, and, <clears throat> and the, the chastening is for our profit. It's to grow and mature us as Christians. There is no way that we can grow uh, unless we go through the process that God has set for us. And, and so we, we shouldn't allow that to deter us or hinder us from being all we can be in God because that, that's really the, the, what the, the process is for, is to grow and mature us as individuals. Okay, and then verse 11 says, Now no chastening of the present seem to be joyous, but grievous. Nevertheless, afterward it yielded the peace, uh, peaceable fruit of righteousness unto them which are uh, exercised by, uh, thereby. And what, what this verse, verse 11 is saying is, is that chastening is never pleasant, but necessary. It's necessary to bring a harvest or peace or righteousness in due time. And, and what it's saying is when we are chastened, then you, you'll see the productivity of that later, later on as, as we grow and mature. It's, it's really a, a training regiment. And because of God's discipline and chastening uh, toward us, it causes us to mature and grow as Christians. That's, that's the regimen. Okay. And then uh, verse 12 said, Wherefore, lift up your heads, which hang down, and the feeble knees. And then verse 13 said, And make straight paths for your feet, least that which is lame, be turned out of the way, but let it rather be healed. God uh, here is the coach. Okay, we're in a race, right? 
God is our coach. And here, our coach is literally pushing us to our limits, encouraging us beyond what we think we can do. He's encouraging us further. God is punishing, is God, God is pushing us to get off the sideline and get into the race. That's what this is all about, encouraging us to, to get active in our Christian walk. Not to just sit on the sidelines and, and just wait for eternity. We need to be out, out doing the, the commandment that God has called us to do, and that's to be a witness for him. And, and if we're going to run this race, then we need, we need to, to get, get off the sidelines, get in the race, get a new grip. With our, with our tired hands. You know, we, I know we get tired sometimes of holding on, but we need to get a new grip. And then in, in this, these verses are encouraging us to, to stand, uh, uh, even if our legs are shaking, stand on our legs and, and become an encouragement to those who might stumble and fall. This, this race is it, it's, it's not given to the swift. But all the strong, but it's given to the one that endured. And and if we're gonna if we're gonna be productive Christians in this walk, then then we're gonna have to get in the race. We're gonna have to endure discipline, and we're gonna have to endure hardship, and we're gonna have to endure those things that come upon us, and not get weary and and, and turn away from the faith. But we're gonna have to hold on and hang in there uh, because all these, uh, these uh, men and women of faith that we read about has gone through what we are going through, but they held on and we have to help hold on. And not so much, you know, for ourselves, but for others. Uh, others are watching us and those who, of us who are strong in the faith, we have to bear the infirmities of those who are weak. And that's our lesson for today. Uh, let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this time and thank you for your word. And we pray that your word is a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. And pray that we can continue to be obedient to you. Well, that's, that's what uh, our lesson for today. And we hope to see you on our next time. But until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.